Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's the one and only, your girl, the cartoon hotspot. And today we'll be analysing a specific scene from the episode, Pretension, and breaking down what the scene actually means. If you're interested in my thoughts, then stick around, give this video a thumbs up, and for new viewers, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell button for post notifications. Without further ado, let's begin. So to recap, Gabriel is making pancakes for Marinette while the two talk about her future. Of course, Gabriel, being the person he is, has a proposition. Well, more of a threat, actually. He tells Marinette that her future is in her hands and he offers her the opportunity to become Paris's greatest fashion designer with his assistance. The only catch is that Adrian does not exist in that future. She'd have to end their relationship and part ways. When Marinette objects, Gabriel responds as follows. A vida é como uma moda. Você acha que tem escolha, mas só tem a ilusão de uma escolha. E eu decido quais escolhas você vai ter. Which elicits the response from Marinette, who says... Está errado. A moda tem a ver com ouvir as pessoas, entender quem elas são, o que empolga cada uma e criar as roupas que vão ajudar a expressar o que pensam e ajudar a se conectarem uma com as outras e a realizar seus sonhos. Now, upon hearing it the first time, you might ask me, what's so special about these particular lines? Gabriel is a fashion designer and Marinette is an aspiring fashion designer, so it makes sense that the conversation is about fashion. Right? Wrong. Is it only about fashion or is it something else? Or should I say someone else? This whole scene is about Adrian. Adrian is fashion. The conversation between Gabriel and Marinette is alluding Adrian to fashion. It's all a metaphor. Now, Gabriel mentions something called the illusion of a choice. I did some research and it turns out to be an actual thing. From my understanding, the illusion of a choice is a cognitive bias in which people believe they have more control over their lives than they actually do. It's commonly used in advertising and marketing to make people feel in control of their purchasing decisions. Back to Gabriel's fashion example. When choosing between different fashion brands or clothing stores, the choices are nearly identical. Everyone pretty much sells the same thing, but people often choose based on colours and labels rather than taste. So yes, Gabriel is correct in saying that he decides what choices are given. But let's consider how this relates to Adrian. In the episode Illusion, ironically enough, Adrian expresses discomfort to his father in having his face on the alliance rings. Gabriel then manipulates him by responding that he had Adrian digitized, that way Adrian would be allowed to be relieved of his modelling duties, then asks Adrian if he would prefer to go back to modelling. But that's the point, it's just an image, it's not you. And since this image frees you from your obligations, we the aggressor are able to spend more time together. But if you'd rather everything went back to the way it was before, just say the word. In Adrian's point of view, Gabriel is presenting a choice. Return to modelling full-time or live with the digitised version of yourself on the alliance rings which everyone in Paris owns. Of course, Adrian chooses the latter and not the former. But was that really his choice? Or was that the illusion of a choice? There are several causes of the illusion of the choice, such as unlimited options, failure to recognise differences between options, the way information is presented. But for Adrian's case, it's misleading information about the choices. Think about it. It is possible for Adrian to not be a model and to have his boundaries respected by not having his face on the alliance rings. But Gabriel wants to control Adrian, or at least wants to use him in one way or the other. So he presents a choice to Adrian that isn't really a choice, but Adrian thinks he has control when he actually doesn't. Adrian has never had control. Another example that came to mind was the episode Wishmaker. In that episode, Adrian was struggling to figure out what he wanted out of his career. He's never had to think about his future because he's always assumed modelling would be his career for the rest of his life. But that wasn't his choice, was it? It was the illusion of a choice. It's even worse when you remember he said that when he was a kid, he's always wanted to be what his parents wanted him to be. Again, that's not a choice. Adrian feels like he's making a choice when actually he's just being funneled into the specific career by his father. When Marinette protests, what she's really saying is that Adrian is a person and every person deserves to be heard. Gabriel barely knows his son, nor does he have any intentions of getting to know him. 
as a parent, it's your responsibility to connect to your child, guide them and help them discover themselves. They will most definitely make some mistakes along the way, but that's all part of growing up. They should be allowed to make their own decisions and learn from them. Adrian should be allowed to discover things that excite him. He should be allowed to express himself and make his dreams come true, not the vision his father has for him. And then Gabriel says, Nega, moda é produto, é estratégia de marketing. Eu crio uma visão idílica de perfeição, a qual todos aspiram. E mantenho isso fora do alcance. What exactly does this mean though? Adrian isn't a person in Gabriel's eyes. He only sees him as a profit generating marketing strategy. Look, nobody is perfect and no one will ever be perfect. But Gabriel has set a standard for Adrian to live up to and no child should have to bear the pressure and burden of not being able to be themselves and make mistakes. What Gabriel is essentially saying is that everyone adores the idea of Adrian. The Adrian we see in alliance rings, perfume commercials and modeling gigs. However, they are all just images. It isn't Adrian, it's just a fraction of who he is. Nobody really knows who the real Adrian is except for a few people. Take a look at this clip. You know, not a lot of people know who I really am either. What people know of me is just an advertising image. But you and me, we could be different. If you wanted to, we could really get to know each other. A few lines later in this scene, Gabriel accuses Marinette of being in love with the idea of Adrian. In fact, he's hell-bent on convincing her that she is, because he cannot possibly fathom the thought of somebody else other than him knowing and loving Adrian for him and not his image. Deep down, I think Gabriel is self-projecting onto Marinette, but we know his accusations are not true. Marinette is very much in love with Adrian, his imperfections, his flaws, his admirable qualities, everything. And she's never once belittled Adrian for his inability to stand up to his father. She understands that he's trying his best, which is exactly why she stood up to Gabriel. At first, Marinette is torn apart. Gabriel got inside her head. I mean, can you blame her? That is a grown, shameless man pushing 50 at best, threatening a literal child. But just as she was about to leave, she remembered. She doesn't have to fall into the same trap of having the illusion of a choice. She can make her own choices and they certainly aren't going to be dictated by Gabriel loser aggressed. I guess you could say Marinette was put into Adrian's position for the first time. She experienced what it felt like to be in his shoes, which is why she disobeyed Gabriel, hugged Adrian and promised to never abandon him. Marinette took control. She doesn't have to pursue fashion and lose Adrian. Likewise, she doesn't have to choose Adrian but forego the opportunity of achieving her career aspirations she can have both because the choice is in her hands. I also want to take us back to the episode Elation. When Cat Noir gently lets Marinette down, she has a breakdown and states that she's sick and tired of people deciding what's good for her. And this is why Adrian and Marinette are a good fit for each other. They know what it's like to not be in control of their own lives. They know what it feels like to be stripped of their choices by external forces. Marinette's duties as Ladybug has gotten in the way of her love life. So when she did finally have the chance, even if it meant not knowing who Cat Noir is behind the mask, she was ready to take it. But of course, that led to almost disaster. Hence why she gave up her miraculous temporarily in Kami's choice. But she realized she can have both. So she gave love another try, even when the odds were slim and stacked against her. Do you really think she's going to let Gabriel tell her who she can be with? No, because she's tired of people and situations getting in the way of her happiness. And that's why she stood up to Gabriel, because she owes herself that much. And that's why Marinette Dupenchenk is an icon. And that is my whole take on this entire confrontation. I absolutely think this scene was one of the best written scenes to date in Miraculous. I'm not even kidding. I love the fact that there's an underlying theme of control and manipulation, but you wouldn't realize it upon first view because you think they're talking about fashion when it's actually deeper than that. If you enjoyed this video and you would like more videos like this, by all means, feel free to request a particular scene you'd like for me to analyze. But now I want to put it to you guys. What did you think of this scene? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. But as for today, that's it from me and I'll see you again next time. Bye!